Away we go. Got your glove gloves. Yeah. The Georgia Reptile Society brings Dr. Ferguson and Jordan a special delivery. Hey. Hello, hello. I'm very excited today. Yeah? Yes. You want to see her? Yes. Awesome. So this is Dax. The Georgia Reptile Society they always bring something in that's very exciting, sometimes even challenging, but it's always good, so I'm eager to see what we have today. Aww. Yeah. You'll see people pig nose. Soft shell, baby, right? Yeah, it's okay. a uh, fly river turtle from Papua New Guinea. On top of being adorable, Dax is a unique species. She is not one that you see very often. They're fully aquatic their whole life. The only time they actually come out of the water is to lay eggs. It's been a animal I've always wanted to work with ever since I was little mm -hmm. with someone as rare as Dax. It's always important to take them in for wellness exams because sometimes they won't show a sign of illness till it's really, really gotten bad. I just want to make sure that Dax is the healthiest that they could possibly be. And I think they're one of the only freshwater turtle that has the little flippers. flippers full flipper. Exactly. Like, yeah. She feels yeah. like a dolphin. Like she actually has like dolphin skin. All right. Yep. So we're looking good. So you want to get an x-ray to kind of look at the bottom. I would love an x-ray of Dax. We can do that. We're going to take some x-rays just to kind of take a look at the inside, make sure everything looks good in there. As well as I'm going to take a couple just samples um, for culture just to be sure that we don't have any fungal or bacteria going on that we don't see visually. Tell me why we're wearing gloves. Are they more susceptible because they're soft shell? Yeah. And so probably if they do get some infection, they don't have the quite the barrier like a hard turtle would have. So I'm gonna get a little nasal here first. Just kind of uh, make sure everything is good. See the two little nostrils there. That's cool. Like, like a little cartoon character. Like a pig. Yeah. You're so cute. Look. Mm -hmm. I didn't see your face earlier. Mm -hmm. Hold on. George, you know, how to, you know how to communicate with a turtle? Uh, how is that? You use a shell phone. <laughs> a shell phone. You think you are something else, don't you, with these jokes? Hey, that's how I roll. All right, let's put the baby back and we'll go x-ray. Bone structure density for reptiles is very important. It tells us a lot about their nutrition and uh, how they're metabolizing the nutrition as well. So I got a couple samples for the swab okay, that we're sending off, okay? Got your x-rays here and like we're looking at bone structure. But I'm happy with what I see. Yeah, so as far as they're concerned, it's good. So no metabolic issues or anything good. like that. We're doing good. Awesome. Right. I guess we got to get a stamp and stamp this okay. clean okay. bill of health, okay. right? Awesome. So we're looking good. Dax is perfectly healthy. It's really great to have vets that you can take exotic species to. And that's really important. Let's take this baby home. Hey, Drea, are you able to fill this prescription? They want me to give them some. Put it on Dr. Ferguson days. I don't know. Paul, I don't understand why they don't never come and call your name. Who? All the rest of your, your co-workers. Oh, they do. You no, just, they, no, you they just don't. over here. No, they don't. We need to do a tally. What name do you call the most? Since I be over here, like, I call Paula name the most. But if I was over there, I probably would call your name the most. So would you say people make their way from over there to come over here to find Paul? No. Yeah, it do. No, it don't. A dog growl at them. They bring them all the way over here, they find me. Oh, yeah, she's definitely wrong. I definitely get asked more than her. Paul, hey. I know, I was waiting. I don't know where Paul went. Hey, go get Paul. See? <laughs> Dr. Hodges enlists his right-hand man on a field call, but he's not the only one who's counting on Paul. So what, what is, how did, how did it come about, this African mission? One of my church members, she uh, asked me, she was like, hey, are y'all interested in doing a mission trip? I was like, yeah, sign me up. You have to watch out for any kind of wildlife while you're out there, hey, man? Uh, they say it's close to the group, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what, what I'm gonna do. So what happened if somebody go missing out of the group? They mean they probably got eight by line. You'll have to ask them, because it won't be me. <laughs> Jerome, you got to get looking good out here, man. How you been? Doing fine. I'm located here at Wonderland Vineyard. Dr. Hodges helped me introduce a new spool of bass to my pond, and I designed this pond myself. So I want to make sure that I got a professional to make sure that we're doing this right. That's a pretty Georgia day out here, Jerome. Yes, it is. It's a new pond. And now we're about to introduce bass. So one of the things I want to do is observe the fish. Just checking them out, just kind of looking at them, kind of see how we're moving now. I want to make sure these fish aren't diseased. I want to make sure they don't have any white spots. Tails look really good. Some good fish. These fish pass with flying colors. Because I'm feeling the bag. I noticed one thing that could be a huge problem. Feel that? Nice and cool, right? Right. It's what, about 92 degrees out here today? At least. 
Well, that ain't a good thing. If we put them in like that, then you probably gonna have them floating dead fish. Oh, okay. If we put these fish in with that bigger temperature di difference, I mean, when they get in that warm water, their body is definitely gonna go in the shop. We gotta acclimate these fish and get this back warm, or we're gonna have some dead fish. Okay. I got Paul in here. Let's go. So, Paul, you're gonna go out. All right, it's mud right there. Yeah, I so... know. I'm just gonna go right here. You can walk out. Definitely, I'm always glad to have my right hand man, Paul. I'm gonna have to get him out there so he can get in there and acclimate these fish. See, I, see I'm sinking. Yeah, I got you. There you go. I would go, but he has the wets. I got you. His job is to go out and float and try to bring this bag to the same or really close to the temperature of the pump. How you feeling out there, boss? I'm good. I'm warm. I don't you... know what about them? <laughs> you know, as the bag is starting to warm, these fish are definitely becoming more and more active and starting to, to warm up. We'll probably go another four or five minutes there, Paul. Mm-hmm. See, so if we put the lake here, right. all kinds of critters been coming. So you saying uh, raccoon? Uh, raccoon, you name it. Uh, fox squirrels. I saw armadillo. Armadillo came. Came through? Yeah, came through. All right, Polly. Let's go ahead and let him out. All right, guys. Hope y'all been acclimated enough. Got some good looking fish here, man. Healthy. I don't see, you know, he look real muscle. I don't see any white spots. Here you go, guys. One bag down, one to go. All right, welcome home, guys. Welcome to Wonderland. <laughs> there you go. Paul got me stuck in Whoa! <laughs> Paul, can I get, look at this is dry. Can I get my boot done? <laughs> look at my old country boy, Paul. And I, can, I can move <laughs> fast enough and leave the boot there and keep my, my sock dry. <laughs> <laughs> I could do this all day, you know? I think maybe instead of being the critter fixer in the hospital all the time, I'd just be the critter fixer pond guy. And I'll just go pond to pond and make sure ponds are healthy. I love that. On behalf of uh, Lake Wonderland, yeah. I wanted to thank the critter fixer for coming and helping us. As of today, Lake Wonderland is open. It's, it's open, there we go. We're very appreciative that Dr. Hodges and the Critter Fixers took out the time to come help us have a happy ecosystem. Right there. Perfect. All right. All right. All right. Lay Wonderland. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good girl. Uh. <laughs> you had Paul go in the, in the pond? Man, that, look, that's our right hand, man. Yeah, you gotta have What about right your hand? right hand? Jordan, Jordan's definitely my right hand. She do things that I don't want to do. So who's the left hand? We got Andrea right there. You know, we couldn't do it without Andrea. She's always Johnny on the spot, or she goes on anything we need. But I mean, it's kind of like you got a right and left hand. You got to be, what's the fancy word? Ambidextrous. Since we have a right hand and a left hand, that mean I don't need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna stay right here. Right here. I guess I have to work there. For sure. But yeah, we can't do it without them. Can't do it without them. Hey, Jordan. What's up? I need some eggs. OK. Yeah. All right. They lay about nine a day. So give me a few days, I'll bring you a carton. So I'm going to make some cookies, and I'll probably bring you some. But how much are you going to charge me for these eggs? Mm, $9.99. Mm. Now, Jordan, come on now. That's a little <laughs> price. This is usually more expensive than the store. It's supposed to be cheaper than the store. But they're organic, and they work really hard to make them. I'm just kidding. Own the house for you. Sounds <laughs> great. Yay. I need some eggs. And I got to eat some cookies back, though, now. OK. <laughs> oh, gee. Oh. Your dog attack dog is here. He got attacked 10 minutes ago. What's going on? We have a laceration across the neck. You're gonna take him out. Ooh, what? A big laceration. Whoa. Oh, my. Hello, hello. Marilyn was attacked by a bigger dog, and for whatever reason, they got into it and went right for her neck. All right, let's get some IV fluids. Oh, boy. We got Marilyn because my wife was diagnosed with cancer, and after the cancer was done, then we got Marilyn. So it was kind of one of those celebratory moments. So definitely, she is so close to us and, and means just absolutely everything to us. She ain't got shook like a rat dog. Oh. Paula, we're going to go to surgery this afternoon, boss. OK. Let's go ahead and knock it out. Yeah, knock it out. yeah. I'm really worried about this. I mean, this is, this is pretty bad. 
This animal needs to go to surgery ASAP. A really small dog that's in shock, this animal's bleeding, it's gate wide open. I'm really worried that this animal is going to live. What you got going here, Doc? Scared. Nice there. Oh, man. Got it good, didn't it? Oh, pretty good. Make sure you go put a neck in the juggle. They know what they're doing, though. <laughs> Little dog like this with a wound this big, I mean, I'm really worried that this animal may bleed today. So my game plan, I'll probably take all this off so you find. Just go ahead and shave here. Whenever I see these surgeries, I'm visualizing in my mind exactly how much skin I have to work with. Just give me more of a margin. Yeah. Where I'm going to debride, what kind of suture I'm going to use, and what kind of suture pattern. It's just a whole lot of things that are going on in my mind exactly. How am I going to get this big gaping wound closed? So first thing we're going to do is start trying to cut away the dead stuff and try to debride it. We might need to teach them self-defense class. What about the other dog? Y'all ever seen that one? Nope, never seen another dog. I don't even know how big the other dog is. Mighty dog. This is mighty dog, huh? Let this be your last time fighting, buddy. Getting it, brother? Yeah, man, we getting it tied up. This wound was right over the carotid artery and the jugular vein. Luckily, neither one of those were Nick, and we're in pretty good shape. We gotten part of it sutured. We just got an inside suture. Sometimes staples work great, but sometimes, like a large wound like this, dog might be scratching. All right. We got it fixed up. I think Marilyn is uh, going to pull through and be OK. All right. You still nervous? Nah. Come on. Uh -oh. All right, we got to do Oh, hey, Mama. I got Oh, you. you look so much better. It's OK, Mama. We've made it off the surgery table, but we're still not out of the woods yet. You know, I have to worry about secondary infections. I got to worry about sepsis. But I think our prognosis has definitely improved. I put booties on, because yeah. it's going to start to itch. Uh-huh. But we uh, get some okay. fluids. It's OK. Uh, we'll be going home in the next day or so. All right, good deal. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm 100% satisfied with Dr. Hodges' care. Marilyn is very special. <laughs> she is our little old lady. We call her grandma at home because she's the one that when you cry or you're upset, she's right in your face or rubbing on your neck. and. She, she's just a very good dog. She was definitely um, a very big addition to our family. With her personality and how she bounces back so quick, I think she'll be just fine. And I get to bring her home soon. Help! Ready to get your medication? Are you fucking lucky? Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, thank you. Oh, did you? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> hey. What's wrong, man? Dr. Hodges tends to a dog who is suffering from eye pain. All right, what we got going on there? Snowball, um, he's been bothering with his eye lately. Let's take a peek. Oh, yeah. Hey, Snowball. Hey. My pet Snowball Brown, he was in so much pain. You know, I was in tears because he can't tell me what's wrong. And I was just sitting there trying to figure out what's going on with him. How's our appetite? He's been eating pretty good. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. Have we been running into anything or anything like that? No, sir. This is bad. I mean, even just touching the eye, it hurts. All right, I'm going to check a few things out. OK. Run some tests. I'll be back. OK. Right, thank you. Thank you. We have something called a tonometer. In about 10 seconds, I can use this machine, and it takes about 10 different points in the eye and lets me know the exact eye pressure. All right, boss, we got your tonometer set up. All right, thank you. No problem. All right. In the eye, we have something called aqueous humor. It contains all the oxygen and the nutrients inside the eye. It should drain out. Oh, really? But sometimes it doesn't drain. And this side uh, is 18. Pressure's within normal range. Let me check the other eyes here. All right. And what this does is it tells me the pressure inside the actual Whoa, that hurt, huh? So it's 66 over there. 66 is way out of normal. This dog has a really bad case of glaucoma. Yes, sir. Heard him coming, heard him coming. Yeah. All right, come on over. You know, we checked around the bone, it's not a tumor, but the bad news is we have glaucoma. Glaucoma is just increased pressure in his eye. Mm -hmm. 
We got some drops we're gonna have you put in, and we're gonna get something for pain. If it's starting to go down some, okay. then we're gonna keep working with it. If okay. not, I'm gonna take that out. Ooh, okay. We gonna pray for the baby. Oh, we we gonna pray for the baby. Man. Hopefully he doesn't get surgery and he's not in pain anymore. That's all we'll worry about. Just making sure that snowball is okay. Where the snowball? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You going home? You going home? You ready to get in the car? Get it, get it, get it, get it. That's all I got. Oh. <laughs> Vanessa the chicken is cooped up with a concerning condition. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? All right, how y'all doing? All Good, right. how are you? I'm great. What we got going on here today? My One of my girls, one of my main girls, she got something. She throwing up something yellow. OK. She done stop eating. Chickens are my favorite animal. I have a backyard of chickens. I love chickens, not just for eggs, but just because they got a sense of humor. Vanessa, she's vomiting and not eating. I'm worried about it because I care a lot about my pets. That's Vanessa. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Vanessa. Vanessa, I think this is the first Vanessa chicken I've seen. Name Vanessa. All my chicken got names. They all got names? Mine too. <laughs> right in here, you feel that? Oh, yeah. That's the crop right there. We call it the crop. Um, and they'll get what we call a crop impaction. That's part of the digestive tract. So when they eat, food goes through that crop. And sometimes they can have blockages or the crop gets full of material, or sometimes it's just fluid. The crop can get impacted because they graze all day, and they pick different things up, whether they're sticks, they're twigs. And basically, it's a blockage, and that crop gets enlarged, and it develops an infection. But sometimes, we have to surgically go in there and, and get that out of there. All right, so hold tight. Let us shoot a quick H right here, OK? OK. Oh, come on, girl. <laughs> I have my own small flock at home, and from my experience, if a chicken's vomiting, then something serious is going on. Oh, no. Oh, what is it, Jonah? She's vomiting. She's oh. backed up. I'm sorry, baby. Oh, it smells terrible. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> that feel better? Oh, Ooh, Vanessa. Baby. All right, so I see a large crop right here. And we can see some solid stuff in here and fluid there in the middle. Basically, what we have is a blockage. So if you can't eat and you can't get nutrition, you know, it's going to die. It's a long-term prognosis when they have these um, crop impactions and that long-term prognosis is not good. You've done a crop. Um, you've done one, right? Yeah. But I mean long-term. I don't mean necessarily mean right now. Like, like it may, like she may probably, get blocked more again, frequently? Like, yep. Like it probably come again. We can repair crop impactions. They do have a tendency to reoccur. Vanessa is going to need specialized attention because if it happens again, it could be detrimental. All right. So we definitely got um, a huge crop. We can feel it and we can see it there. Um, we got to relax the baby, do a little surgery, try to open that thing up and stitch it back up. <sighs> this procedure probably 50 50 chance. Long term, it, it's definitely a possibility that it happens again. I was telling my wife I'm going to have to let that one go. OK. Uh, so y'all do humane thing. Yep. I don't want to care to that no more if that okay. might come back to it. It'll hurt her more than it'll do anything. I don't want to do it. Yeah. My favorite thing about Vanessa is walking her walk up to me. <sighs> and peck on my clothes. She, she likes to pick on clothes. She loves people. She's a people lover. Wonderful bird. So I talked to the owner, and, um, you know, he has hundreds of chickens, you know, but he's not sure if he can take care of Vanessa because right. he's not sure if he's going to be able to give the quality of care that he needs because he has so many chickens. That breaks my heart yeah, for her so I, and for him. Watching Vanessa suffer like this is heartbreaking. I have an idea. Hey, Dad. Um, so with Vanessa's situation, I know Dr. Ferguson explained that it may be like an ongoing thing. Um, it may happen again. I know. Yeah, what he was telling me. Yeah, you have hundreds of chickens. I have chickens at home. You do? Yes, I have my little flock. I don't have hundreds. I have ten. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, 
What we could do, if y'all are willing, is if you just want to sign um, her over to me, and then I can make sure she gets continued care if it happens again. I'll take her as my own. Mr. Ronnie, he's super sweet, and he really loves Vanessa, and he didn't want to have to put her to sleep. And if I was able to help in any way um, by adopting her, I can help him. Sure you're okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I would rather, if somebody can do something, but if somebody can do something to help. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to give it. We're going to give it our best shot. I'll make sure she gets good care, OK? From here on out, I promise. OK. OK? I feel good, and I feel bad. I feel good about that because I know that I'm putting her somewhere that she can receive the right care that she really needs. And I feel bad because I wasn't able to do it. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to take her home. This way? Okay. These are tears of joy and sadness. We're going to sleep? The baby with Maybe not. Hey. How are you? Doing fine. How are you, dog? I'm doing fantastic. I'm fantastic. Who you got here? Ollie. You need to get it turned up a little bit today. We got Ollie here. His love is unconditional like any other pet, and uh, so it just brings me a lot of joy. We consider him a family member. We wanted him to come today, get his wings clipped, get his claws trimmed. How long you had this baby? Uh, three years now. Three years, three years. Uh -huh. Absolutely gorgeous. Hey, how you doing, bud? Paul's my deacon. He is part of my church family, so that's how I got here today. All right, we're gonna take him back and get this man a pedicure. All right, sir. Be right back. Appreciate you. He's my pastor at my church. Me and him got to talking, and he told me that he had a bird, that he wanted to get the nails and the wings trimmed, and I was like, hey, man, I got you. We can do it. Yeah, buddy, you definitely need a nail trim. That's for them. Like, he just <laughs> clawed You see all that? <laughs> hey! Then the wild parrots are flying from tree to tree, so they tend to file their nails down. However, they aren't flying from tree to tree inside our house. So sometimes these nails have to be trimmed. So the trip you're going on to Africa, will he be going with you? Uh, he won't be going, but uh, I was instructed to take lots of pictures. That's pretty cool to have a pastor where, you know, y'all have like interest. Yeah, we got to, got to talking, and I found out he's an animal lover. So how does a conversation come up like that at church? Uh, well, you know, the typical, how you doing, and so what you do for a living? I work with animals. With Dr. Bernard Hodges, he was like, I heard of that fellow. I was like, you heard of him? He was like, yeah, that's the guy with the, with the hair. <laughs> In the office, people know Paul is my right-hand guy. You know, oftentimes you'll see him at the head of my surgery table. He's basically my anesthesiologist, my surgical tech, everything, jack of all trades. But beyond veterinary medicine, Paul is just an amazing guy. I mean, he goes down and feeds the homeless. Should be much better. You want to come to Daddy then? Definitely an honor to have Paul here. And it's really cool to have uh, his pastor here with his parrot. Say, I'm that. I'm a good boy. I appreciate y'all, man. Yes, sir. You enjoy? Yeah, man. Yeah. Appreciate me. Appreciate me and you, Doc. I'm yours with me. Great things about you, my man. Yes, sir. I That's what he told me. That's what we were talking about. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> exactly. He's, a, he's a good man. He's a good man, valuable member of the team for over 10 years. So he, he's just a real solid individual. I'm just glad that I was able to come here today and to visit an African American veterinarian. I didn't even know we had anyone in this area of Dr. Hodges' caliber. He did a great job, very caring, very loving. We had a great time at Spa Hodges. Right, Ali? Say, hey. You look at me. Hi. Hi. Hey, y'all. Hello. Hey. How are you doing? Oh, I'm all right. Snowball is ready for a recheck after Dr. Hodges diagnosed him with glaucoma. I've been thinking about this, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have Snowball Brown back there to the vet. We visited him last time where his eye pressure was at a 66. And so we're doing the follow-up visit to see if his eye pressure got any better. Hopefully he doesn't get surgery, continue with the eye drop, but i are waiting on for Dr. Hall just to hear the final results. <sighs> Thing is still swollen, but look like that third eyelid is ulcerated. <sighs> That's what that red thing is in the oh, middle. Oh, okay. I 
have thought about that dog all weekend. Like, is this dog gonna be better? Because I knew it was an uphill fight. If this pressure hasn't come now and this poor animal's still in pain, you know, and, and we worry about a possible eye uh, rupture, we gotta get this thing in uh, surgery today and, and get it fixed. It's still painful, not as painful, but it's still painful. I'm really hoping that the intraocular pressure has decreased. All right. Oh, God damn. Right in the middle, 60. So we were at 66, and we're only down to 60. I mean, it's gotten a little bit better, but... Maybe we might need to take that out. Oh, my snowball. But don't make it look cosmetic, I promise. OK. Typically, we use different glaucoma medicines that lower the pressure in the eye, but in Snowball's case, it's not quite working. I think we have something else going on. Well, at least we try the pain. Try. We try. At least, and we know what's going on. So I'm really worried about if there's some kind of blockage, if there's some kind of tumor behind there. It's probably better for Snowball to go ahead and remove this eye. Like, down in here, I'm just hoping they don't have a, a tumor or anything down there. I don't there. know. All right, are you ready? I was hoping my drops would work. But they didn't, so plan B. It's crazy. This is, this feels fun, man. As I started removing the eye, I noticed that the air is really, really hard. And this is definitely not normal. This thing is hard, Andrea. I mean, like, it's I, like, I see you. It's like, I mean, but it's like, I'm saying it's physically hard like a rock, the eyeball. So what, what does that mean? That eye, I think, definitely is cancer. I, we made the right decision to take it out. After 20 years, this job never ceases to amaze me. I mean, you think you've seen it all? Welcome back. You know, this can be cut and dry. Take this out. Of course, there's something new. Hey, hey. Hello. Hello, Snow. So I know y'all visited, and Snowball is doing better. Yeah. So Hello. no pain. OK. Hey, man. But as you can tell, Snowball's half a hand. Yes, he is. <laughs> and, and the hair's going to grow up, and you won't be able to tell anything. OK. So I need you to give, this is a pain medicine. And good luck. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for everything. <laughs> All right. Snowball, Snow. I'll see you in 10 days now. Take okay. these sutures out. He's ready. But he's ready to go now. And she's been around the house whining. She won't eat. Well, her playmate is with her now. Yeah, her playmate home. <laughs> I'm glad that they came to the conclusion on what was going on with him because he was in so much pain. And I hate to see him that way. He's a puppy, of course. He's like a newborn baby. He's just a bundle of joy. We're just glad to get him back home. So Val said it's time to go. It's time to go. Hey, bud. <laughs> All right, here is Vanessa. <laughs> Thank Jordan. you. Thank you so much. Vet tech Jordan prepares Vanessa the chicken for surgery. We are giving Vanessa some anesthesia to get her nice and sedated for Dr. Ferguson to come and try to flush this crop out. Come on, Vanessa. Oh, poor thing. Oh, get out of here. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Drea, give me a mask. I'm disgusted. <laughs> you smell it over there? It's too early in the morning. <laughs> smell good, huh? No, it does. Dream, stop looking like that. Can we have Paula's issue on the surgery? We <laughs> could go and remove it. Because <laughs> they're going to smell it. Oh, what well, dog. I don't think you understand. I have smelled a lot of stuff in 21 years being here. Critter Fixer, anal glands, gastro juices. But Vanessa's vomit today, it, it tops it all. Like, it makes me want to cry. <laughs> it smells the worst. Dr. Ferguson, you're up. Need to, like, kind of linger off the edge or anything? Let's see here. Ooh, ooh. I'm already connected to Vanessa. She's such a sweet girl, so I want to give her a fighting shot. Vanessa will not survive without this surgery. I think they was impacted. Got my nose running up. Let me help you out there. Anything I can do to help you out, you know? Not only does Vanessa crop looks horrible, it smells even worse. That's why we call it sour crop, because of how bad it dang smells. Ugh, trying out a gag. All right, I think that's good. One nasty surgery, huh? Yep, we got it all flushed out now, so now we need to close it up here. At the end of the day, you know, the baby's going to be better. It's going to go home with Jordan, and, um, you know, she's going to do a good job of compliance because she has chickens. She knows how to take care of them, and it's one of her fondest animals. So I know it's going to do well. The outcome that we have now is a lot better than the outcome that I thought, so at least we're giving this baby a chance. 
I'm glad you're taking it off. I mean, that's a that's a very noble thing. That's a pretty fix her hug for that. Hey, yeah, Scott. you're doing a good thing here. Try to do good around here. All right. I love it when Doc feels feels proud of me. You gonna get that crop healed up, okay? He's a father figure to me, so anytime that I can make him proud and make him happy, it's a good day. Hey, come on, woman. Hi. Hello, how are hello, you? Hello, hello. Crowley the cat streams in with a messy situation. Crowley, what you been doing? You been naughty some, things. You been doing some bad things, I heard. <laughs> some naughty things. Yes, ma'am. I brought Crowley in today because she has had a new behavior where she is peeing on my bed. I thought, is she just being a jerk? Or after thinking about it for a while, I thought, my goodness, maybe something's wrong with her. She looks so sweet, though. I don't think he would do that on purpose with you. <laughs> this is my question. Now, where this baby's urinating, you haven't seen it doesn't look red tinged or no blood or anything mm -hmm. like that in, okay? So when owners come in with these cats and they say these babies are urinating inappropriately, you know, several things come to mind. You know, anything from endocrine problems or sometimes it's just a behavior problem. Are you noticing a urine after a sleep? It's like, it's random. There's not been any true pattern. And what about like stressful events? Like people coming over that don't normally come over um, after no. that? So what I want to do here is I want to rule out anything metabolic, anything organ-wise, um, liver, kidney, diabetes. So I want to pull some blood here. Okay. Kind of got a mystery here. What I want to do is rule some things out. Because we're a middle-aged cat, is make sure that we don't have diabetes or any kidney issues. Good girl. You, you a thick girl. How else you gonna fit in that bag for? Well, that's all right. We got other sizes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Put you in a crazy kitty bag. Sometimes when cats are aggressive, we pull out what we call the kitty burrito. Um, it's basically just a bag that we put the cat in and makes it easier to draw blood, or called a burrito. Purpose is for my arms to continue to look as beautiful as they are. That's the purpose of this bag. Poor dang, Paul gonna put you in the bag. Yes, ma'am. I've been doing the job long enough, and cats have very, very sharp claws, and they fast. Is it old saying that cats out of the bag? Not when Paul's working. Good girl. See how much easier the cat bag is? I know. It just hurts my heart. I'd rather your heart be hurt than my finger. So. <laughs> Diabetes is a very, very serious endocrine disease these cats get, and it severely affects their quality of life. He's gonna run a stick on this one. I'm okay. gonna run in the set of you on this one. Right. Crossing my fingers and hoping that this blood work does not reveal diabetes or Crowley or something more serious. We're back. All righty. All right, so we have our CBC, which basically tests our organ function. My suspicion initially was, are we dealing with diabetes? We're not. So you can rest there. You're Good. looking like, hold on now, hold on here. All righty. Looking at this, we're probably dealing with more behavior. It's kind of strange and uncommon happen when they get older, but they can. You know, a lot of times something may change in an environment. It'll knock these cats all off their normal track. And for his behavior, we're going to put the baby on pheromones. What the hell? Uh, my recommendation now is that we use pheromone plug-ins. This one will emit a pheromone which only the cat gets. It doesn't affect us, but it will put the cat in a common mood. Do they have those for humans? We need it, don't we? I wish it did work for us, because I need to put plugs all over the place. Well, that That's would right. be good if you could. Everybody's like, why is everybody so calm in her room? We cracked the case there, you know? It was a kind of a detective process. We had to work through this and try to rule things in and rule things out. Probably a week or so, I really feel like we'll be back to normal. Great, thank you right, so thank much. You. I appreciate all right. it. Have all a right. good day, OK? All Let right. me know how that goes, OK? I sure will. All thank right. you. Talking to Dr. Ferguson, you know, he's given us some pheromone. I am hoping that the plug-in brings peace and no pee. <laughs> Go get Branson. We have a really cool dog. This dog is, like, gorgeous. So everywhere she goes, everybody's taking pictures. Could you imagine you walking through the park with this dog? And girls keep stopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cobra Kai is a giant schnauzer. Today he's in for just a wellness exam. I mean, I almost never get to see a giant schnauzer. A very rare breed, but so cool. Hmm. Hey, hey, how are you? 
<laughs> Come on, when he walk in the building, everybody oh, want to take yeah. selfies up. Everybody like, do you get that when? when yes, when everywhere out? we go. A half an hour trip is like two, three hours. When we go out with Kai, it's like a famous person, you know. Everybody stop us and take selfies. Hey! <laughs> hey, bud! Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary? It's just a uh, little bumps behind his right ear. Nothing to worry about there. Okay. Oh, and I don't know about um, expressing his Is that anal gland? Gland? <laughs> Yes. We'll do that. Anal sac, a little glands at 4 and 8 o'clock around the anus. Anal glands are usually expressed when a dog passes his stool. And if an anal gland is blocked, you know, this can get really messy and really smelly. So we go in and we express those glands and hopefully prevent infection, which none of us want. Drea. Oh, no. <laughs> when people see this dog, everybody's like, ooh. So he's just here for wellness. Um, we're going to express his anal glands. Is he grown? Yeah, he's two. He's two. Oh. I'm going to let Andrea show an expert way of removing anal glands. <laughs> Not an expert way, though. Because they have become domesticated, they don't express them by themselves, so we have to help them out sometimes. So I am going in. We got one side. Look at you. You're doing a good job. All right, Noah, you ready for the other side? I'm ready. I'm ready. You're doing great. I get somebody to clean up on our five. <laughs> All right, but the hard part is over. It wasn't that bad. You yeah, said you didn't get it done. <laughs> I <know. laughs> And I was planning on never getting it done. I learned a key lesson today to stay near the dog's head, especially when the anal glands are full. <laughs> Those anal glands? Very full. Bad. Very cool. We want to check it maybe every three, four months. Hold no on, before I go. I'll be right back. You gotta take a picture. Your car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before Coma Kyle leaves, I figured I'd give me a selfie too. You never let a good selfie with a giant snozzer go by. You know, it's definitely gonna get a lot of likes on the ground. Yeah, well, there you go. How are you? Ah, you just bit me, huh? So you mad, you bite me, huh? What we got? Draco. Draco. Okay. Hi. A high school teacher arrives at the practice with a lizard whose tail is in trouble. So how old is this baby you got? He is about six months. Six months old? I'm bringing in my bearded dragon, Draco. He is a classroom pet. Noticed a couple weeks ago that he had some toes missing. And then shortly after that, I noticed that his tail was getting dark. You see where it's dark here? Uh -huh. Here and it's basically it's getting harder. You see how hard it is, which means that yeah, it's dying there. Oh, okay. These toes, some of these look more like they kind of starting from a little injury. Yeah, see right here, mm -hmm. they bleeding a little bit. Bearded dragons that come in and losing their digit, it's definitely something that's serious. Draco is a class pet. A lot more pressure on me in this case. I don't want to let these kids down. See, it's not a lot of circulation in these toes. They're so small, so any kind of irritation, it, it, it damages the circulation, and it just dies. You know, I want to look at these bone structures because if they do have, um, like, a mild form of metabolic bone disease, everything is not as strong as it normally would be. I want to start out with some x-rays. Metabolic bone disease is basically when these reptiles can't convert calcium, and these bones are brittle. It is something that can't be fully reversed. So a lot of times when they have this metabolic bone disease and it's so severe, it leads to a quality of life issue. Mm -hmm. no, he got a long way. He, he don't want to be here. Come on. <laughs> Look. Hold on, buddy. Calm down. Hey, <laughs> he holding up for you. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so we're trying to look at this old bone structure. If he does indeed have metabolic bone disease, it's kind of worst case scenario. At that point, we're really kind of shooting behind the eight ball and it's kind of hoping and wishing. So I normally look at these long bones and see what they look like. Doc, please tell me some good news. You got enough problems already, don't you? All right, so we're trying to see how nice they look in these legs. Yep, so I don't see any metabolic bone disease. Ooh, no. The bone structure looks pretty good, but I'm still a little bit kind of in the air on what's causing the issue with these feet. You know, you got to... Kind of, once again, put that detective hat on. So it's not, if it's not metabolic bone disease... It almost appeared that is it a thermal issue because it's on all the areas where there's the least amount of circulation. Tip of the tail, tip of the toes. Is it getting too cold? 
we ruled out metabolic bone disease. Now I want to look into something that's more husbandry issue or environmental. It's done a lot of damage to these toes. It may be something that we can't reverse. All right. So I got the x-rays taken. Bone structure looks okay. Okay, so I don't see why it has metabolic bone disease. Okay. So environment, tell me about the cage. Is there anything in there that can cause an injury? On the bottom, I just have like this, the school grade, those brown paper towels. Uh-huh, tell me about the temperature. 80 to 90 degrees. Okay, on both sides, the whole time? No, just on the hot side. Bearded dragons are cold-blooded animal. They depend on the environment for warmth or when they cool down. One side of the tank needs to be very hot, roughly 100 degrees. So if that environment is too cold, these digits are not warm like they should be. This could be leading to Draco's issues. My thought process is still going back to it maybe temperature-wise. It's just not warm enough. And you think about the areas that are affected are the ones that have the least amount of circulation, mm -hmm. which is all the way in the toe, all the way in the tail. As far as toes concerned, we're probably not going to be able to do a lot to even try to say the two or three there. Mm -hmm. The minimal thing we need to do, is we need to amputate part of that tail. Okay. You know, if it was one of the other okay. lizards, you know, back in the day, they grow it again, but I'm sorry, they don't. No, so, they don't Yeah, they don't else. do it yet. And hopefully we can slow down the progression of this and it won't continue and it won't develop into a systemic problem. That's what scares me a lot is they become uh, systemic, which means the whole body becomes infected. Amputation is never ideal, but I, we caught it early enough, left untreated. He said it could actually go all the way up the tail and then kill him. So um, I'm glad we caught it early. Good. Yep. Well, how you know where to cut? I see where it's necrotic and I can feel it there, so I'm going a little higher just to get to some nice red, healthy tissue. Uh-huh. All right, buddy. That's what I think is a good area. Yeah, I'm getting some blood here, so I think we're good right here. Probably feels better getting that thing off there. You know what the mermaid used to clean her tail? What does the mermaid use to clean her tail? Yes. I don't know. Tired. I, I get it. <laughs> so we just finished Draco's surgery and everything went well. I had to remove probably about an inch to an inch and a half of that tail. This is definitely not going to affect anything as far as survival or mobility or anything for Draco. You know, they don't need a long tail to survive. So Draco should be back in the classroom on warming hearts. Got a little Draco here. It's back to you. He's looking like, oh, no, I don't want to go back. You behave and you be nice to the class, OK? He's going to sleep. Draco is a little shorter than he used to be, but he's healthy, and the doctor said that he'll be fine. Got some good advice from the vet to keep him healthy, and my students will be completely eager to see Draco. <laughs> You ready to go home? Speaking of left and right hands, that was a pretty selfless gesture of uh, George with uh, Vanessa. So how's Vanessa doing? Glad you're taking it off. That's a very noble thing. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're doing a good thing here. Try to do good around here. All right. She said the baby's doing good, but only time's gonna tell how well we do. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, man, you know, I hired Jordan when she was in high school, and man, she has just really come along. I'm really proud of where she is now, and all of this is just part of what Critifix is all about. It's pretty neat. Yep. You ready? Yeah. Let's see how it goes? Yep. I think they're going to do great. We took Vanessa home two weeks ago. We've had zero issues the past two weeks. She's been eating well. The vomiting has stopped completely. Do it bother you when I come home with new chickens? Not really. No, you love all the chickens. Yeah. So I know it doesn't bother you. No, so you're getting spoiled out here by yourself. She's been in quarantine in the coop, but in a separate section, kind of getting used to being with all her other chickens. Come on. Today's the day that we want to mingle and see how she does with everybody. So we just want to make sure nobody gets in any fights. They mix well and they can be friends. Nobody's even worried about her yet. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Hey, 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 stop, stop, stop. I feel like she instigated that. Did anybody see that? <laughs> it's normal for them to have a little bit of dominance, a little bit of fighting, she did fine. It makes my heart happy to be able to give her a second chance and her to come out here and live with us on our small little farm. She's gonna, she's gonna be happy. I think she'll fit in. Yeah. Won't she? Yeah. yeah. More chickens the merrier. <laughs>